Hello everyone, welcome to the course of Programming Fundamentals with Python. This is our week number 4 of the course. In today's lecture, uh, we are going to talk about some basic programming elements of the Python language. Here is the roadmap for today's presentation. As usual, I will start with objectives of this lecture. That is how uh, you would learn at the end of this week or what are the objectives of this week and then we will recap the hello world program and we'll discuss the basics uh, the basic elements of this program we will then move towards the variable and a special type of operator which is called assignment operator and then we will talk about the identifiers which is a special type of of name that we use for any variable function class object or module we will try to differentiate between the statement and expression and after that i will talk about comments how you can use them and what is the purpose of using comments in any programming language some white spaces and finally keywords of python programming language so the objective of this lecture is that it will enable the student to learn about the basic programming elements like what is variable, how we use them, uh, what are the naming conventions for variable, what are the rules and regulation for giving names to variables and then some built-in functions like print function and uh, input function, identifiers. Uh, tokens, white spaces, statements and expressions. So these are the basic concepts that we expect that you would be able to learn at the end of this lecture. These concepts will enable you to write or practice programming inside the Python language. So these are the fundamental basic building blocks of any program that you are going to write in the Python language. Now hello world program. Actually, this is a traditional way to get started with a new programming language. When you are you, when you are writing your first program for any programming language or using any programming language, for example, C, C++, Java, etc. Then the first program that you are going to learn is the Hello World program. So it is like a traditional way to get started with a new programming language to write a Hello World style program. Why we use hello world program because it is the simplest program in any language and in Python it is the easiest way to write the hello world program because it will contain only a single line a one statement or one instruction program. Uh, so in Python the hello world program is going to be like this print hello world. Now uh, we have seen this before but let me talk about what is print and uh, what is the, the string literal which is enclosed inside the single or double parenthesis and how it works so basically the print is a predefined function we can also say that it is a built-in function and what is function a function is basically a piece of pre-written code that performs a specific operation a specific task in Python, we will see that it has numerous built-in functions that perform various operations. Perhaps the most fundamental built-in function available in the Python language is the print function. Actually, it displays output on the screen. So it is a predefined function that can be used to print things out. For example, to the user on the monitor. By predefined, here we mean that it is built into the Python environment and it is understood by the Python interpreter. So whenever you you use the print uh, built-in function inside your program, the, the, the Python interpreter will recognize it and it knows what is the function of this function. So this means that the interpreter knows where to find the definition of the print function which tells it what to do when it, in, when it encounters the print function. Okay, another thing is that when a programmer executes a function, then uh, we can say that we are actually calling the function. So whenever the interpreter finds the word print, it actually makes a call to the print function. Just like you are making calls to your friends or family members for doing something for you. So actually the interpreter is calling the function. When you call the print function, you type the word print and then 
it is followed by the parenthesis that is actually the syntax that the function name must be followed by the parenthesis and we also have something written inside the parenthesis this is called the function argument which is actually the data that you want to display on the screen in this case i want to display hello world on the screen so i'm passing this hello world as an argument to the built-in function print uh, another thing is that the the string written inside the quotes so the quote marks simply specify the beginning at and the end of the text that you wish to display so here is the beginning and here is the end of the text and I want to display everything which is in between these quotes remember if you miss one of them then there will be an error so you have to place the starting quote as well as the ending quote if you miss one of them it will give you an error the print function actually tries to print whatever you give it in this case i am providing a string constant but later on we will see that we can also pass variables to the print function we can also pass other type of constant or data to the print function as well but in this case we are trying to pass the string now what is string programs actually they deals with data and data could be anything so in this case the data is a string anything that is enclosed in single or, dou or double quotes in python it is considered to be string for example muhammad ali inside the parenthesis one two three four five inside the uh, not the parenthesis inside the quotes there is also an example of string or 1998 2020 there is a, all these are examples of string if they are enclosed in the in the quotes actually the data for example in this case the hello world it is a sequence of characters so in programming terms a sequence of characters that is used as a data is referred as a string so in this case hello world is an example of the string because it is a sequence of character and it is enclosed in single quotations inside programming a string is actually called string literal so whenever a string appears in the actual code of a program it is referred to as string literal so in python you can enclose a string literals in a set of single quotation marks or a set of double quotation marks depending on the version or the flavor of the python that you are using okay now this is a very static uh, one line program we want it to be more interactive interactive in the sense that we want the user to input to provide the text by themselves for that we have to use another function and that is called the input function input function is also built-in function or it you can say that it is a predefined function the interpreter knows when i encounter the input function i have to call the function to perform its duty and it is opposite of the output function this statement actually does several things first it execute a function which is called the input this function here in this case we are passing again a string as an argument remember whatever enclosed inside the parenthesis is referred to as argument and we are passing arguments to the function in this case our argument is a string constant and our function is the input so we are passing a string uh, literal to the input function so when you run the program it actually display the statement enter your name on the screen and it will ask the user to provide anything whatever you write will be assigned to this variable which is name so name here is a variable what is variable we are going to talk about it in a moment but uh, for the moment name is a variable and the equal sign is actually an assignment operator it will it will uh, it will pass the value it will assign the value that we take from the user by using the input function to the variable name actually it will store the value inside the variable name 
so in this case uh, it will display the message and then it will wait for the user to provide an input and then that input will be saved will be stored in the variable name a variable name is actually an area of the computer's memory that can be used to hold data and data could be string it could be integer it could be boolean data like true false or it could be even floating point data with a decimal point in the digits so in this case our variable got a name and the name is actually name so it is actually the label of an area uh, if we depict it by using graphically so you can see like this the grid here shown the computer memory name is a variable and the john is the value that we store inside this memory and you see it is actually referred by this variable which is name so this is the basic idea which is uh, of the variable which is depicted in the picture so in the figure the memory is shown as a two dimensional two dimensional grid of memory locations just like the zone each memory location can be referred by an address which is associated with it and the address is unique within the memory and it can be used to return to the data held at that location and that address is often referred as the memory address of the data so it is this memory address that is actually held in the variable name uh, this is why the name variable is shown as pointing to the area in memory which contain the string john Thus the variable name allow us to access this area of memory easily and conventionally. Okay, now whenever you want to use variable inside your program, you have to follow certain rules. And these rules are called naming conventions. A programs usually store data in the computer's memory and perform operations on the data. So a variable is a name that represent a value. Uh, such as a number, a string, or a boolean type data, or a floating point data. So variable is something that represents a value, right? And the value could be any type. Uh, we create variables with meaningful names because uh, the purpose of a good variable name is to make your code more readable and more understandable. Once a variable is created, you can store data in it, you can retrieve the data held by that variable, and even you can modify the data associated with that variable. Uh, this is called a variable because the value it reference in memory can vary, can be changed during the lifetime of the program. So that is why it is called a variable. So some uh, some naming conventions for variable, you can see them here. Uh, whenever you want to use a variable, uh, you have to follow certain rules. And one of the very first rule is that variable name could consist of any number of letters A to Z, small or capital, and underscore is also allowed, and digits 0 to 9 is allowed. So a variable name is made from these things. It could be a letter from the alphabets A, B, C. It could be a, a digit from 0 up to 9, or it could be an underscore. But Another rule is that, okay, you can use letters, underscore, digit, but the first letter must be a, the first character must be a letter, A, B, C, or it could be an underscore. It means that we cannot start a variable name with a digit, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So the first character is going to be a letter, A, B, C, either capital or small, or it could be an underscore as well. Similarly, another rule is that the Python keywords, predefined words, it cannot be used as a variable name. For example, print, although there is a built-in function, but you cannot use it as a variable name. Uh, what is token, what is keyword, we are going to explore them in a moment. But you cannot use the keywords, the predefined words, as a variable name because they also have uh, another purpose. They serve for another purpose, so you cannot use them. You cannot assign them to variables. Variable names, remember, they are case sensitive. So if you use a variable name, for example, uh, for example, sum with all small letter, s small, u small, m small, s u m sum, then you have to use the sum in the same in the same case, all small. If you use, for example, s capital, 
and u m small then that is not acceptable so you have to be careful with the variable names because they are case sensitive a variable name cannot contain spaces inside variable name spaces or white spaces they are not allowed similarly a variable name should not contain an underscore alone now these are some naming conventions beside from naming convention we also have some guidelines for variables name these guidelines are recommended if you follow them okay if you do not follow them doesn't matter it will have no effect over the structure of the variables name but it is recommended that you have to follow the naming guidelines for for giving names to your variable so some of the the of the guidelines are here uh, mostly programmers in python they follow the google style guide for naming variable and what is it according to the google style guide the recommended way to write a variable name is called lower with under lower with under mean that if you have if a variable has more than one uh, words if a variable name consists of more than one words then you have to uh, separate the words with the help of an underscore for example let's suppose the name of a variable is uh, circumference of a circle now we have four words circumference of a circle so in order to to use it as a variable name we have to put an underscore after circumference and then an underscore after of and then an underscore after a in order to make it a resemblance to the google style guide so this is google style guide and it is recommended to be used for a naming for giving name to variables Similarly, it is recommended that avoid variables name where the first character is underscore. Remember, you can use underscore as a first character while giving a name to a variable, but it is not recommended. Recommended is that you have to use an English alphabet for giving name to your variable. It should be the first character of your variable name. Similarly, your variable names should be descriptive they should be meaningful they should be clear enough it allow other programmer to have an idea about what the variable is representing or what value it is expected to be stored by the variable so your variable name must be clear they must be descriptive and uh, they must be meaningful okay once a variable is declared you can actually assign different types of data different types of values to the variable here is a general syntax for assigning value to the variable uh, we on the left hand side we have a variable name and then we have the assignment operator and then on the right hand side we have an expression this equal sign is an example of uh, operator and this is one of the most widely used operator in python this operator is called the assignment operator actually the assignment operator assign whatever it is on its right hand side to the variable on its left hand side in this case we have we are dealing with an expression uh, what is the difference between a statement and 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 an expression we are going to explore it in a moment in a moment as well but first let us see some examples of assigning uh, values or data to the variable here in this example uh, we are assigning 100 which is an integer type data to a variable and the name of the variable is number and then in the second example we are assigning a floating type data that is 10.10 .10, to a variable and the name of the variable is miles and then in the third example we are assigning a string constant that is python to a variable and the name of the variable is name so in the first integer type value is assigned to a variable in the second float type value has been assigned to a variable and then in the third string type value has been assigned to a variable you can also reassign values to a variable 
In Python, not only the value of a variable may change during program execution, but also the type of a data that is assigned is also possible to be changed during the program execution. And this is this is one of the best feature of a Python programming language that you can actually change the data type of a variable at runtime. For example, you can assign an integer value to a variable, use it as an integer for a while, and then assign a string to the same variable and then later on you can assign float point data to the same variable actually the new assignment will override any previous assignments for example uh, we have a variable here which is century in the first uh, statement in the first instruction we are assigning a uh, hundred which is an integer data to this variable and then I am using the print function to to display the value of this variable which is 100 in digits form then i am assigning a string constant to the same variable now you see it is possible that i can use the same variable inside the same program but assigning them different type of data and this is one of the feature of uh, uh, of Python programming language and this is called actually dynamic typing which is not possible in other language for example C or C++ there you have to specify the type what type of data the variable is going to be um, the variable is supposed to save and then you cannot change the type of that variable during the program Similarly, another uh, thing which is important to remember is that you can actually use the assignment operator in another way. Here it is. Suppose I have three variables and they are A, B and C and I want to assign the same value to all these variables. So instead of using three statement A is equal to 1, B is equal to 1 and C is equal to 1, I can actually uh, use a single statement like this. So here one is assigned to the variable C and then the value of C is assigned to the variable B and then the value of B is finally assigned to the variable A. So if you print the value of A, the value of B and the value of C, it will display 1, 1, 1 because we have assigned the same value to all the three variables. So in this case an integer value is assigned to the variable A and then to the variable B and also to the variable C simultaneously. And values of these uh, variables are then displayed with the print function. Okay, uh, here one observation is that what will happen to the old value when a new value is assigned to a variable? Well, in Python, it is actually there is a process uh, which is called garbage collection when a value in memory is no longer referenced by a variable then the python interpreter automatically removes it from the memory through a process and that process is called garbage collection okay now the concept of identifier which is very much similar to those of the variable actually a variable is a type of identifier so beside variable we have other types of identifier as well like function like classes like objects like structures like modules all these are examples of identifiers so whenever you are using an identifier whether it is a variable whether it is a function a class a module an object or a data structure or a structure then you have to follow the same rules and regulation so these rules we have studied in the uh, naming for variable naming conventions and uh, recommendations so these are the same things for example name of any identifier should begin with an alphabet or with an underscore you can use any combination of letters from a to z either small or capital an underscore and digit 0 to 9 similarly you cannot start the name of an identifier with uh, with a digit like 1 like 2 like 3 etc uh, another rule which is same that keywords cannot be used as identifiers name and spaces are not allowed inside the, the the identifiers name and it could be of any length so these are the same things now statement and expressions actually statement in python program 
uh, which actually consists of a sequence of statement. A statement is an instruction that the Python interpreter can execute. Statements are everything that can make up a line or several lines of Python code. For example, z is equal to 1 is an assignment statement. When we say a z is equal to 1 or sum is equal to 1 or a is equal to 1 or 2 or 3, all these are examples of statement and these are assignment statement. Remember, a statement will not return a value. We will, we will learn after a few weeks that how a function or a variable can return a value or a statement can return a value but for the time being you have to remember that a statement does not return a value but it does perform some task over the data so statements may control the flow of the program or it could do other uh, tasks for example uh, ask for resources or other wide variety of tasks on the other side, side we have expressions Actually, expression is an arrangement of values and operators like plus, like minus, like uh, static, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponent, etc. So, it is actually an arrangement of values and operators which are evaluated to make a new value. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So, 2 plus 3 is an example of an expression. Actually, all the expressions are statement as well, but all the statement are not expressions. Right. So the main difference is that expression contains some evaluation. It returns a value. It will give you an, a new value. While the statement, they do not return a value. They are actually instructions and they do not evaluate the values or it could not return a new value to you. So that is the main difference between a statement and an and, and expression. When you write, for example, a print hello world or hello username, a variable. So it is actually an, start, uh, an example of a statement. Uh, which includes a call to a function and an assignment of a value to a variable as well. Okay, comments. We talked about comments previously, but now let us revise some of the concepts related with the comments. A program is actually a document, is like an essay that describes the thoughts process of its writer. Code also happens to be something that can run but just because it can run does not make it a good program. Good programs can be read just like an essay, just like a document, just like any other thing. So comments are an important way to improve readability. It's a common way to make your document, to make your essay more meaningful, more readable, more enjoyable. So that is why they are, they, they, they are important component of any program. It is a common practice to add comments to the code because it will help anyone who is reading your code in order to understand what the code does, what its intent was, when a decision, decision, design decision the programmers made, etc. All these things are related with the comments. So actually they are part of the program. But the important thing is that Python interpreter ignores the comments. They are not executable code, you can say. They are intended for people, not for the interpreter, not for the Python interpreter. So, who are people? Actually, later on, you will have to read your own program. So, you need a way to understand the code, the purpose of each statement. For that purpose, you, uh, you actu we actually use comments. And also, people are other people, like your professor, your colleagues, your fellows, or if your, your code is open source, so the follower, the readers, they actually know a mechanism to understand your code because sometimes the code not speak for itself. So the comments are there to speak about the code, the source code. So it is intended for any person reading the program code. It could be yourself, it could be your friends, it could be your fel fellows or it could be your followers or other researchers as well. So comments are short notes that are actually placed at different parts of a program. You can place them anywhere but there is a proper syntax for using comments inside a program. In Python, the comments begin with a, a special symbol that is called the hash sign. So everything that you place in front of this hash uh, symbol, it should be considered as comment by the interpreter. When the Python interpreter sees uh, uh, a hash character or symbol, it ignores everything from that character to the end of the line. 
anything following that character to the end of the line will be ignored by the interpreter as it will be assumed to be a comment. There is also another way of uh, mentioning comments in the program and that is called multi-line comments. Actually with the hash sign you can uh, put a single line comment. If you want to add another line of comment then you have to put another symbol at the beginning of the line. So in order to include multiple line comments you have another option and that is that you have to put three times double quotes at the beginning of the text and three times double quotes at the end of the text. So that could that should be considered as a block of comments or multiple line comments. Why we use comments? Because good comment uh, it actually don't repeat the code or explain it in most of the cases but they clarify the intent of the program of the code. So comments should explain at a higher level of abstraction than the code. What you are trying to do is the duty of the comments to explain it. And how comments are used? If your code contains a novel or not worthy solution, so it is important to add comments to explain the methodology of your work. Now another comment, another, another common thing uh, about Python program is the white spaces and white spaces are actually the free spaces that we use while we are typing. So when we type, we usually separate words with what is typically called the white spaces. Python counts white spaces, uh, the following characters they are considered to be white space. For example, space, tape, return, line feed, form feed and vertical tape. All these are considered to be white spaces. Python has a rule while working with the white spaces. For example, if you write y is equal to x plus 5 and then somebody else write y space equal space x space plus space 5. They are both the same things. Here we do not use any white space while here we are using different white spaces. So this is actually the same thing. If you use white spaces or if you do not use white spaces, they are actually the same things. One important thing is which is related with the white space is is what we call indentation. Indentation means that you are actually giving a tape in front of a line. So you must be careful with it. You cannot use tape anywhere in the programming in order to make it more beautiful for example because indentation or tape space which is created with the help of a tape it has a different meaning in python language because uh, it is considered to be as a new block okay so you can you are not allowed to use actually the tape inside the code if you use it uh, without uh, without uh, if you use it in an in, in inappropriate location then the, com the the interpreter is going to generate uh, an error message the rest of the white space they are acceptable even you can include blank lines they are also considered to be white spaces uh, and the rule uh, of uh, blank line is very trivial because blanks line are allowed anywhere and they are also ignored by the interpreter so you can use them to make your code more readable okay and then we have the tokens actually the special keywords the special symbols and the special characters that can be used in any python program or python language they are actually examples of tokens so any special keywords they are called tokens any special symbols they are called tokens or any special characters they are called tokens which are used in the python language these languages elements are generally all combined they are tokens more importantly than what they do is the fact that python reserve them for its own use and remember you cannot them as a name for variables because they are reserved for special purposes you cannot redefine them to do something else for you they are reserved their duty has been defined be aware they exist so that you don't accidentally try to use one of them for example for a variable name for a function name or for a class name so they are reserved you cannot use them the first token is called the keyword which is a special type of tokens and keyword are special words in python that cannot be used by you or by someone else to name anything they indicate commands to the python interpreter they are known to the python interpreter they have specific duties assigned to them so you cannot use these words as names 
in your program. A Python has already taken them for other uses. Here we have a list of the keywords. So uh, you cannot use any of these, uh, these keywords for your variable name or your function name, etc. This is a list of the keywords which is used in the Python language. And then we also have operators, which is another type of token. Operators are special tokens and they are like sequence of characters uh, that have meaning to the Python interpreter as well. Using them implies some operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, and then we have the exponent, etc. So all these are examples of different operators that we can perform over operands, over data, and they return a value in return. So using them implies some operations. So you cannot use them for other purposes. They have built in a uh, built in specific uh, task that has been allocated to these operators. So operators are a type of token. We also have a uh, punctuations or delimiters, which are also another type of tokens. Uh, punctuations or delimiters, they actually separate different elements in Python statement and expressions. A complete list of uh, punctuation is mentioned here, like parentheses, uh, like the eight sign, hash sign, bake, um, bake slash, equal, semicolon, colon, single quote, double quotes, etc. All these are examples of punctuators and some of them we already used. For example, parentheses we use in front of the print and input line and the comma we have used, uh, the single quote, double quotes, we use them for string literals, etc. Now what is literals? We talked about it. It is a type of token. And uh, in computer science, a literal is a, actually a notation for representing a fixed value or a constant value like 2, like 4, like 6, like 10 or like anything inside the double quotation. All these are examples of literals. Almost all programming languages have notations for atomic values such as integer, floating point, numbers, strings and booleans, etc. So 1, 2, 3 is an example of literal because it has a fixed value and it cannot be modified. One, two, three is one, two, three forever. In contrast to literals, uh, we have the variables, which are actually values that you can change during execution of a program. So the opposite of literal is variable. Okay, this was uh, about today's lecture. Okay, I have an important announcement to make and that is that uh, I'm going to start the practical series, the practical programming of Python language. And my objective is that I will uh, upload the programs week wise. For example, you have covered week number one theory. So the week number one programs uh, related with that week that will be uploaded under the heading uh, week one and then week two and then week three and so on. So see you in another video. Till then, goodbye.